She grew up right here in Southern California, and now she's taking on the world stage with her stand-up act. In this week's Java with Jamie, I got to sit down with rising star Leslie Liao, whose humor is relatable and matter-of-fact. I'm an LA girl, so I like a trendy, cool coffee shop okay. where I can write. Leslie Liao meets me at Coffee MCO on the border of downtown LA and Koreatown. Well, thank you for having Java with Jamie. Cheers, thank Cheers, you. Thank you. Thanks for, thank thanks you. for coming to meet me here. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. Is it what you thought it would be? It's what I wanted, it's what I thought it would be. Like, I'm always looking at those trendy lists of like what coffee shop to work at, and this was top of the list. She tries different coffee shops around Los Angeles, hoping each one brings a vibe she can use in her writing. It's like taking a workout class. If I'm sitting next to other people that are doing it, then I'll do it. <laughs> They'll pressure me into like, at least even pretending to write. You need the peer pressure. Yeah, yeah. But even with peer pressure, Liao thinks only a fraction of the jokes she writes today will make it to the stage. It's a numbers game. Everything, not everything you write is gonna be a banger joke. So it's like, if I have to, I have to invest eight hours, maybe half of it will be vaguely interesting. Half of that will be worth trying on stage. Half of that would be actually good. But a lot of it is good. She taps into her life as a single Chinese American woman living in Los Angeles and was recently selected to be a new face of comedy for the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival. Okay, I've never been married, okay? I've, I've never met my soulmate, right? But even though I've never met this guy, I think about him all the time. I wonder about him, you know, I'm like, what is he like? What does he do? Where does he live? Like, he's gotta be pretty special, right? But now I'm realizing we should not do this. We shouldn't hype up our soulmates this much because at this point, I've been waiting my entire life to meet this one man. And I'm not trying to sound mean, but I know he's not gonna be worth the wait. <laughs> she just made her first television debut on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. I grew up in Orange County, California, so for most of my life I identified as a white person. <laughs> it's good to see you all. And recently appeared in the Netflix comedy special, Verified. I wear fake eyelashes, okay? I glue on hair where there should already be hair. You know, it's like, guys, I know you'd be late to stuff too if you glued your <laughs> on every day. How did you get into comedy? I was always a stand-up fan. I didn't start stand-up until I was 29, which I think in stand-up years is like you're 70. <laughs> like you, and I, and I almost didn't do it because I felt too old. But Liao says another feeling took over. I wanted to wait until I felt the most confident before I started it because also stand-up is a very mean job. Um, not everyone likes you, and I knew that was going to be the case. Like, statistically, there will be people that loathe my comedy. So she took a writing class and started performing around the Los Angeles comedy circuit. And L.A. is a really, it's a tough place to start. I think a lot of comics would prefer starting elsewhere, like maybe a smaller city so you get more stage time, then graduate and come to L.A. But I like starting here because just, like, the best comics are here. Like. They're headlining, they have specials, they tour, and if you're lucky enough, you get to hop on a show with like Bill Burr, Whitney Cummings, and like I've had to follow some of these people when I was only two years in. She's now performed at the Comedy Store, Hollywood Improv, and the Laugh Factory, but she still doesn't read or respond to all the comments. Just before I even started stand-up, I just accepted that people would like me. Like, a, a guy doesn't want to date me. There's statistically, there's a million men who prefer not to date me. Like, I'm not even, like, statistically, that's a fact. And I just knew that, like, I'm not for everyone. Statistically, there are a billion people who will not think I'm funny. So I, I told myself that first before I started stand-up. So now when I read them, I'm like, yeah, of course you don't like me. <laughs> All good. Yeah, I knew you wouldn't, you know? And while Liao doesn't think her jokes are necessarily profound, she believes it's her straightforward style that keeps audiences coming back. Where do you get the inspiration for your jokes? For my jokes, I try to keep it very, very authentic. I, I think um, if you're gonna, if you're a comic and you want to write about what you know, I honestly don't know a lot. I'm not. I'm an expert in nothing. I'm not. I'm not super political. Like, I don't feel confident talking about current events. I don't think I'm the most educated on that. Like, I can barely keep up with the latest headlines. Like, I, so if I want to write about what I know, all I know is my human experience. That's it. 
I, I, that's it. I can't really comment on other things. Like, so if I reflect on my life, I know what it's like to be a struggling single woman in LA. I know what it's like to navigate female friendships. I know what it's like to grow up with immigrant parents. I know what it's like to grow up in Orange County. Like, that's all I'm an expert on. So I really like focus on that. And for now, Liao doesn't want that focus to change, no matter how many gigs she gets. So what is the dream? Um, honestly, the, dr the dream is just doing this for a living. Um, I never really had goals, which is weird with stand-up. Like, someone asked me, like, isn't your goal to, like, sell out Madison Square Garden or, like, have the trilogy of specials? Like, of course, like, that stuff would be amazing. I just, um, I worry that if I have those concrete goals, it might change my writing style. I find that so refreshing. So Liao says growing up with immigrant parents can be tough for kids who want to pursue a job in the entertainment industry. I bet, yeah. So to keep her family happy, she always had a day job and a backup plan. What she was says. her backup plan? Did she say? Um, just working in other various okay. realms of entertainment. You know, she had been working in comedy, but right. you know, behind the scenes and kind of doing some other. I mean, she seems so cool she and, is. And, and so confident in the fact that she started later in life. So when she gets the, the negative reviews, she'd be like, you know, that's fine. You don't have to like me. I like me. And I think that's amazing. I think that comes with age for a lot of women where you spend so much of your life people pleasing and trying to yeah. do the right thing. And she said, I didn't want to get into comedy at the wrong time when I was right. too young and didn't have the confidence to be able to just put myself out there. And she wanted to be able to say something. So I do have to give uh, our executive producer, Jessica Ming, a little good. shout out because she's the one who... Uh, told introduced you about it. me to Leslie, and I just I I left my jaw hurt. I was I laughing bet. so hard. I need to, I need to check out her work. So yeah. that was cool. Yeah. Thanks for showing us that.